I don't understand how pork rinds are pork. It's just crispy air. It's skin. It's the skin of of pigs. Yeah. And, uh, which is I know, the name of my I, new metal I, band. I didn't ask what pork rinds are. I just said I didn't. I don't understand how they're pork. I just explained it to you. <laughs> it's the skin of a pig. I know. I'm just talking about the look of. Okay. All right. Pig is pork. Unfortunately, this is all we have to talk about because nothing at all happened in the world of Collider and Schmoes. No. Did you get. Ellis lied on Harloff and Ellis. We didn't get a text. We didn't get a text, did we? Did you get a text? I got a text, but it wasn't the text that he was informing us about. Maybe he was high on edibles. I have no idea. What was your text? He wanted to talk to me about uh, solo podcasting, which I did for like 10 minutes last week, and Colin Coward and Bill Burr and shooting the shit and uh i didn't have a ton to talk to him to him about so i just i stopped texting him back <laughs> i do want to thank you for holding down the fort last week i greatly appreciate it listen the uh it's a it's a stressful world out there in general and uh it was a stressful stressful week last week i had to put a not just this podcast together but it also made me realize too one of the reasons we work so well besides the the chemistry that we have according to christian and, and other people yeah it's the fact that, listen, I'm a relatively forgetful person, and sometimes on this show, just to pull back the curtain, I do rely on you to remember things that I've forgotten throughout the week while I'm watching Collider while I'm at work. So when you're sort of pitching out this and that, I act perfectly like I, of course, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm sort of remembering it as we go along. Um, and yeah, definitely miss that last week. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed it, and I was glad to see that Frank and Kristen were well received and contributed. So I thank those guys as well for doing that. Um, Did you see the comment where I accidentally edited out Chris, uh, Kristen, and I d- I forgot to bring her back, and I I talked to no one for like yeah. thirty seconds. I actually got a I got a text from a fan who will not be named uh texting me about the thing that you did and i said look right i wasn't a part of that podcast it's gonna be fine (laughs) listen let me ask you a question ryan snelling you've known me for a long time you've podcasted with me for long enough what do you think my reaction was to finding out about that information that i had omitted this uh this thing from the podcast that i had misedited the podcast it's just not a big deal that's exactly what I thought. I was like, yeah. yeah. There it was happened. one time, there was one episode of the Smoville after show where I messed up in the editing and somehow my co host's track got scooted over a little bit. So for like an entire 10 minute conversation, our dialogue was overlapping each other's. Well, one of us would overlap and then there would be a pause before that person talked. I guess if it's moved over a little bit. And it was disjointed. And you would have thought that the world was ending. I was in Lexington. I couldn't come back home to fix it. It wasn't going to be worth fixing it, taking the time to export it and upload it back. It's like you would have thought the world ended and I had that Jay Williams moment where I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to care about this. It's fine. We'll, we'll, tr- we'll try again next week. <laughs> you texted me and we're, you were like, can you listen to this to see, which I'm the wrong person to do with stuff like that because I'm just like, yeah, let it go. It's fine. <laughs> so you had a booger in your nose during the YouTube video. It's not a big deal. Did I have a booger in the? No, but I'm I'm constantly uh, worried about that when I film YouTube videos. I'm like, do I have a, a booger in my nose here? Welcome to this week's after schmo, or as I'm going to call it, Ryan Snelling's resume. I'm Ryan Snelling. My name is Jay Williams, and to be quite honest with you, uh, I don't know what part of the previous. Let's see, six minutes that we've been recording is going to be used as the intro, so I'm just waiting for a text from Christian. We are on the precipice of a brand new Collider video. Right, I think they're vulnerable right now. Like They're just getting started. They don't know exactly what direction they're going to go in. Thankfully, Jay, I am filled with ideas. Yeah, listen, I liked the way that everything, and I know we're going to get deep into it, because that's what we do here. (laughs) I am very proud of everyone there, of course, and I think everyone handled it with so much professionalism 
And that's fine because they're, they're, they're business people, they're paid, and, and this and that. So I'm going to do for everyone else at Collider what they wanted to do while they're on air right now. <clears throat> All you doomsday motherfuckers out there need to realize that you do not know what's going on and now you yeah. need to just go take a nap yes. and eat eat some soup. Yeah. Look at what's going on now. This is some punk rock shit. This yes. is the rebellion. We out here. We in this. It's going down. I told you so. Yes. I, you guys need to just relax. Let's go. We've been saying it for months. Chill the hell out. Mama, we made it. Things are going to change. Yes. And y'all look stupid as hell. Squad. Do you think right now either Christian is fist pumping like, yes, I couldn't say that, or he's just going to send us a DM and be like, what the hell was that? I think it's going to be Dennis who looks into the camera, points his finger at us and says, listen, motherfucker, (laughs) the person that's finally just been bottled up, it'll be like Mitch from waiting. Mitch from waiting. If you all know that scene, John Francis Daly, he's been abused the entire movie, and finally he just goes ape shit on everybody. So good he's not! And you. And he points to Dane Cook. Well, he wouldn't point at Christian in this particular instance. He goes, <laughs> you are the shittiest motherfucker in here. <laughs> and now he's writing um, the Flashpoint movie. So, very good. Um, I would like to go over, I've got the Hollywood Reporter article in front of me. I also have the version that Collider.com made. Before I get into all that, before we dive deep into this fresh news, I just want to say that this week in general, even though I don't think we, I I think we did a good job not falling into the doom and gloom and trying to sort of manage expectations in Schmoville, I hope that we contributed to that conversation. But aside from all that, this week in general, there was just a much, it was just a lot of fun being a fan of Collider this week. It was just kind of magical in a sense. And it was a huge weight that was lifted off our shoulders, right? Because I'm I'm not going to go super into it, but, or confirm or deny what we knew and what we didn't know, but we've been on the front lines with this stuff and it has been trying times (laughs) just to sit there and be like, uh, yeah, you guys should just keep your chins up. It's all going to be good. I I remember hearing from Christian when he first kind of involved us in it and told us what was going on. And I remember thinking that it felt like an entourage episode. And and that's sort of how it's described in in the article. And then it's sort of I th- I think when it the, the narrative of it it feels like this like Deuces Machina like Fernandez just came in and saved the day, swooped down. De- Deus Ex Machina. Is it do we really know? It's Deus. Do we really know? Yes, I I know for a fact it's Deus Ex Machina. Welcome to uh, the pronunciation. Did you little. take French class in high school? That's Latin. Thank you very much. All I'm saying is, it just kind of felt like a, an entourage episode where there was so much conflict and people were wondering how it was going to be fixed, and man, and all of a sudden somebody just swoops down. There's a savior at the last minute, and it all works out. That's sort of the the motif of that show. It all is going to work out. And then I sort of got to thinking a little bit more about that. And yeah, it was kind of fun to see it that way. But and, and I was reading a lot of the comments, too, in the Facebook group. I don't know if I like the idea of saying Fernandez is a savior, in a sense, because I don't know what there was to save. Uh, I don't know if you if you are on board with that idea. Like, this is a transitional period but to buy into the fact that this was like a, a, a big saving moment for the gang, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be interpreted, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think we're ever going to know. Maybe we will. We'll have to wait and see after the town hall thing. But listen, a few things. Let's just get a few things straight right here. So, yes, the ownership of complex over collider is no longer the case however there is still a relationship with complex and collider complex is still their cpm 
and they are responsible for some distribution things that are going on with the channel and this and that, which is a fantastic, and the article said as much, it's a fantastic relationship to still maintain to be in business with one another. Both people sort of get to have their cake and, cake and eat it too. It seems like Complex wanted to sort of move in a different direction and Collider wanted to move in a different direction. And if that was the case from the get-go, what that signals to me is the fact that Complex didn't really know what necessarily to do with Collider with this new direction. So it could have left a lot of people sort of out in the cold and out in the dark. I'm not going to speculate really any further in, into that. But it seems like Mark Fernandez, as a an investor from a business perspective, sort of saw this opportunity to go in and sort of inject some money, also with a, a silent partner who we're not sure who that might be, but inject some money into it and also bring some new ideas to the table. We'll go through what some of those ideas are. But this is a very interesting sort of thing. This is something that you don't see a lot in this community, community, so to speak. You see production companies be bought and sold and this and that. That's not really that big of a deal. But a, for something like Collider that doesn't exist that much, this to me seems more like a tech company acquisition of things, so to speak. Uh, and that's very exciting. And we'll break all that down the more we get into uh, the article. Let me, uh, since you brought up the silent partner thing, I want to get this out of the way real quick because I've been kind of building up this. I almost posted about it in Schmoville the day that this was announced. And then I realized I didn't want to take anything away from that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do a whole negative post, but so the, the first thing out of so many people's mouths after this news came about, everyone always likes to bring up Campia. And the fact that there's this unknown silent partner, everybody, I don't know if people were joking about it or legitimately thought that Campia was involved. Guys, you're doing it again. You're doing it again. You're doing that thing where you just assume and you can't imagine a Collider video without Campia, even though it has existed almost as long as the Collider with Campia. And this is supposed to be great news. He is doing his own thing. I'm not taking anything away from what he's doing to the side. It's just it's just a non-point. Like, I don't know why people keep bringing that up. So if you just think about it for a second, that's not who's involved. He doesn't need to be involved. He doesn't want to be involved. Can we just move on? Let the past die. It, it, it's not Campia's collider anymore. And to be fair with that whole situation, we don't know who it is and who it isn't. But at the end of the day, it kind of just doesn't really matter. Like, that's not something to focus on. They weren't throwing out this mystery box for you to unpack who this right. could be. Obviously, if it was somebody crazy, like, I don't know, if it was like fucking Bill Gates or something like that, then yeah, that, that would mean a lot of interesting things for Collider. But it's just not the pivotal thing that people really need to be focusing on, on right now. Right. This isn't a, a twist in a movie that we're trying to figure out here. They think a guy who has a Patreon page is the silent partner who bought Collider. Yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense. Anyway, give me a break. The, and the, the part that's clearly being overlooked, people want to bring up Campia. How about the fact Fernandez produced Vice City? That's the biggest tidbit that I got from this article. Forget about the Collider stuff. Vice City, the Dexter mobile game? Who is this guy? Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that I read that I didn't need to... Uh, ne well, not necessarily didn't need to <laughs> expand upon, but... That I could oh, hold on. Let me. I, I wanted to close my savior complex point real quick. I didn't. And again, I'm not taking anything away from it because this move is the most like swagged out, <laughs> like swaggerific move I've ever seen. Like, here's this guy here. Let me just buy this company and take us into the future. Employ all these people. It is a dope move. So I didn't want to take anything away from that, but I just didn't want to make it. I didn't want to go all these episodes talking about how it's not doom and gloom and then act like there was something that needed saving necessarily. I just wanted to be careful with that language. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, what I, the point that I was about to make, um, and I got thrown off track because that text message from Ellis that he said that he was going to send, he just said it. So I was like in the middle of the show, like, oh, okay. So there's that thing. Anyways, uh, there were things in this article that, to my knowledge, we weren't really privy to that I found fascinating things like Collider currently employs 18 people and 
they are hoping to employ 50 people by the end of the year. Now, we don't know specifically what that means. That could mean 50 full-time employees. It could mean a mixture of full-time employees and freelance people. That in, in and of itself is extremely, extremely exciting and interesting and fascinating. And to what level that could mean, that could mean people in front of the camera. It could be people behind the camera. It could be, I don't know, it, who knows what it could be. But also this whole idea, and this is what I really want to get into with you specifically, is the fact that Collider is not only going to be giving us the content that we know and love, that we're used to, and some new content as well, but they are also sort of turning into what seems to me to be somewhat of a production house, somewhat of a third party and ancillary organization or company that develops content maybe specifically for other people or content that they could then turn around and sell on to another company. And this is why I sort of throw out that whole idea of maybe it sounds like a tech business move, a company that is developing apps, developing programs for other companies to use or to turn around and then uh, sort of sell those off as, you know, some sort of, I don't know, uh, just a financial commodity that they can have to raise money for their company. What did you take away from that bit of the article? Jay, I'm glad you brought this up. I've got pilots that I've written. I've written movies, plenty of, plenty of features scripts that I have locked up on my hard drive. I'd be willing to share with anybody who's curious over here at the company. And it's another reason why I will be reading my resume live at the end of the show. I we've done that before. I love this idea. Because this is going back to a conversation I had with Ellis. We've seen Stuckman kind of dip his toes. I would have liked to have seen. There are people like Riley who I know, as far as I, as far as I can tell, would love to be making movies. People like Perry. People like Clark. I think all of those people love hosting, but maybe they get a little you know, fatigued with dealing with YouTube and the internet. And maybe they want to potentially snowball this career with the audience that they build for themselves to create content. And I think that's very exciting. And yes, that is me assuming that those are the people in place that would be able to do that. Maybe I'm putting too much on them. Maybe they would, you know, hire other amateur script. I don't know. I'm not sure how it's going to work exactly. But I think that this is a really, really exciting idea. It, it goes beyond the restrictions of YouTube and what you can do there. And I remember people like Christian, people that... They have the most patience out of anyone I have ever seen because I would have been the guy, the second Collider changes in any any sort of way, if I was behind the camera or in front of the camera, I would be revealing everything because there was no way that I could hold this in for this long because this has been in the works for a long time. I'm going all the way back to when they teased in a, 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 an original series back on the Smos and the live show when Sasha Pearl Raver was apparently writing it and it was going through rewrites and then I don't know if I fell by the wayside or not. But I think there are people in that building that have been wanting to do this type of thing for a long time. And again, if you still want to believe that the people in that building will contribute in some way, shape, or form, I think it's cool that they have people like Copster, people like RB3, who can maybe contribute something when it comes to filming this stuff. Because I know like, I gave Roka a hard time the past couple of weeks about what does it mean to produce heroes um, and it, we've talked a little bit about that off air as well, but I think it could really, it could really display these people's voices if they were able to create original content that wasn't based on others. So <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, I'm, I'm not really on that p same page though. I think we're on two separate pages here. I didn't take that or read that whole thing with them that they're going to be creating short films and movies and television shows. I think it's still going to be and this is obviously I don't have anything to base this off of, but I think it's still going to be very familiar to what Collider's already doing potentially. And for instance, I think we've already seen some instances of of that already. Uh, they did an Ash versus the Evil Dead sort of show for stars back in the day. Uh, we saw them sort of farm out their team and their production for the coverage of New York Comic Con. That's sort of what I'm I'm seeing, maybe potentially developing other types of shows like the Schmodown, maybe developing a top 50 superhero style show for a particular website or to sell on. Maybe even in the same way that uh, podcasting production houses produce shows 
like a serial or like an S town and then go on and sell that show to another podcasting production company. Like we can put those things together in house. That's sort of more of what I'm seeing, but you're thinking more bigger picture stuff. Um, I I don't know if it has to be either or I think, I think it, it can include everything that you just said, but to quote the, the article, Fernandez has visions of launching video games, VR projects and scripted television series under the Collider name. Okay. Yeah. So, but like I said, it doesn't have to be either or. It could be kind of everything that we've talked about. I want to cast a wider net is Fernandez's actual quote uh, after that line is stated. So We got that we got that tease too from Christian in uh in Harloff and Ellis sort of talking about potential wrestling content. This is something that's been on the table for correct me if I'm wrong, for quite a while. The speculation about some sort of wrestling show or even some sort of MMA show yeah. via Collider has been sort of talked about for quite a while in video games as not, well. Not that people like Christian and Roca couldn't do it because they obviously could, but that was something that came out of the mouth of Campia a lot. So that was sort of something right. that I've, I... I get the video game. I, they dipped their toes into it with the VR stuff. I get that. It makes a whole lot of sense. That's one of those things and we could go back and forth about this all day, but sort of a part of nerd culture and it's expanding in in a similar direction well, video games is just one of those things i'd be afraid to do because it's so i think it's yeah. i mean it's just so saturated it's like do you do this because it's so popular or do you stay away from it because everyone else is doing it it's, right. just, it's one of those weird things that you sort of have to learn um but i don't know i don't i, I don't think they're afraid so they they did those vr videos before they haven't been around uh the past few weeks but uh it looks like they're going to be coming back so we'll see well, let me ask you one question real quick uh, to get your take on this. So one of the interesting things that you and I pay close attention to outside of maybe the Collider and the, sh- the Schmo space is just what other people and other uh, sort of channels and brands are doing that are similar to Collider. We've talked a little bit about The Ringer before. We've talked about Screen Junkies before. Is there any shame in saying that Collider might need to with this new sort of uh, this sort of blank page to sort of create more stuff and new stuff, should they be putting a, a few of their eggs in the basket of playing catch up? Sounds negative, but should they maybe adjust some of the things that they're doing to maybe accommodate for audiences that might be used to the ringer where they have their podcast feed and this and that should they potentially move in that direction? Do you think? Yeah. I, and I think we've had a version of that conversation on here too. I would, we have, but it seems so much more real now, right? I think so. I, I, I think going back to what we just said, I think that that might be something, I don't know how seriously they're taking it right now, but having a podcast network, I think could be huge because I, obviously there are podcasts or another thing that's pretty saturated at this point. Everybody has a podcast, but you I think there's still room and I think they have the capabilities to just fly past all of the amateur the hobby podcasts that are out there and become something like the next ringer. And it could even just function entirely outside of Collider. Just have another podcast network that houses completely different voices and they have their movie show. They have their TV recap show. It's like, I think there's still plenty of room to do all of that stuff and make a big splash. And I know, again, moving away from Collider Video, I know that Collider.com in general has a couple of those kinds of podcasts already. So I think you could cast a wider net, maybe involve sports. Maybe you te- maybe that's how you test things out because even The Ringer has Absolutely. Even the Ringer has uh, what's called Channel 33, for those of you who don't know. Like, of course, they have their core shows like Bill Simmons, The Bill Simmons Show, and The Watch. Um, they just introduced the TV recap show that are going to be talking about Atlanta. But they also have a Channel 33, which is sort of just a mixed bag. And I think even The Watch was there before it became its own show. And Kind of like an SK Plus, sort of, but a little bit more diverse. Kinda. But it's one feed and just sort of a hodgepodge of completely different episodes of a podcast. And I think Channel 33 is utilized as an experiment for that. Sight and sound. 
I could see them doing that in that way if they wanted to maybe see top 10 show is a great example how the top 10 yes. show was a podcast on SK plus and then they were like I think this could sustain a collider video and it did that and you know aside from what actually happened is a whole other conversation but that's sort of what I'm thinking about yeah and I mean that's sort and it's sort of a interesting model and it's an, an, an interesting method because the way the way that Collider has done it in the past, the way that it sort of exists, is sort of backwards in terms of how it's done now, uh, or maybe not done now, but how it's been done lately. You take a channel like ESPN. Everybody's heard of that, hopefully. And a channel like ESPN, they have their ESPN radio content, but it became mm-hmm. so popular, they said there's no reason for us to continue to show replays of this college football game that nobody gives a shit about the third time. Why don't we just take our ESPN radio shows and put them on television. Let that sink in on ESPN. They just take the radio show and they put cameras in front of people's face. There's no reason why that couldn't potentially translate to something on, on collider. And of course we do have the example of top 10 and that being the case there, but it's the same thing that I've always said. You don't always necessarily have to take up that studio space. You don't necessarily have to do all that stuff. There's no reason why you couldn't have a, a show like Top Ten take place in a closet in the new in the new studio right. space. There's just no reason why that couldn't be uh, why that couldn't happen. And I'm glad you brought it up because uh, I have a ton of podcast ideas uh, that I would like to pitch in a room with Mark Fernandez. Oh, do you? We can do that at the end of the. At the end of the show, excuse me. Uh, you could pitch him. Uh, you pitch him for sight and sound. I need to ask you this because I'm not really familiar with the with these terms, and I figured you would be the guy to go to. And I think our audience uh, might need some help with this. Explain. I'm I'm, I'm going to quote this block here. Fernandez says that he's looking at ways to incorporate the blockchain technology that powers cryptocurrency into the Collider business. But when asked about the role of crypto in his business, he decli- he declines to provide much detail beyond we know the kind, the freedom that potentially Ethereum, and he's going to make fun of me for fucking that up, and other cryptocurrencies can bring to the table. Help me out with that. Uh, honestly, I don't have a ton of knowledge on cryptocurrency stuff. Okay, very good. What, what I do know about about it in general is it's a very sort of volatile and lucrative uh, sort of currency system in the sense where no one really knows where it's going to go, but it has provided or has proved to be quite beneficial. In fact, in the last I think six months, there was like a huge jump in uh, in like cryptocurrency worth and value and a lot of people dumped their shares of that or whatever however that works and they made quite a bit of money <laughs> um i don't necessarily know any sort of way that content can be created around that outside of the fact that it's just very very niche i don't know if that's sort of what he's speaking to in that regard or what the the article is alluding to or if that has something to do with perhaps how things are financed i honestly have no idea i really don't know of all the times that I needed you to cite something from Joe Rogan, you did not come through. Well, first of all, I don't cite anything. I just I just speak about it in unsure terms. That way no one can hold anything. <laughs> no one can hold me to anything as factual things. That's one way that we're similar. We expect to not be held accountable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to talk up you have to tiptoe around things. That's that's why. Well I said I, I wasn't sure. Or I would just completely fit, flip my stance on a particular opinion. <laughs> Without warning at all, and I do not expect anyone to call me out on that. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of where else we can uh, tackle this article. Um, there was, um, th- so Collider wrote up uh, a version, and I thought it would be written by. It just says Collider staff wrote it and put it together, but uh, they were just sort of talking about how uh, Frosty is, of course, going to continue. I guess this was in Hollywood Reporter as well, but Frosty is continuing to be the editor-in-chief of collider.com and we know that he's going to be uh at the town hall it even says that beloved shows like movie talk jedi council heroes and the movie trivia schmodown actually and it says and of course movie trivia schmodown will remain stalwarts of collider's youtube channel but look for new and exciting things to come but uh again they just sort of expanded on the idea that it's an independent um independent entity Currently hiring, by the way, 
I don't know if I want to do this because I'm going to apply for every job that's on here, but uh, I will let all of you know that uh, you can apply or ask about job inquiries at jobs at collider.com. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Are, are we missing anything from the Hollywood Reporter? Um, not necessarily. The only thing I really want to talk about here uh, that's left to talk about is this whole town hall meeting thing. Now, this is a fantastic opportunity, I think, for for everyone there to sort of discuss the plans of the future. Not only personally am I looking for it to be the sort of town hall where people ask questions and this and that, I would love for it to be personally a state of the union um, to sort of hear out of the horse's mouth. And I don't even like horses, but the fact that where this... Who's the horse? Christian or... Um, Dennis. Dennis is the horse. Uh, and I want to know where things are going in the future. I want to know where the company's going. I want to know maybe not necessarily specific plans of the type of programming, but where they are sort of going to start putting some of their, their intentions and some of their energy and their, all of the things that they have at their disposal. Because I think it makes a, a lot of this uh, doomsday clock that people were sort of counting down leading up until this announcement had to do with the fact that they just couldn't talk about a lot. But I think what can really win a lot of people over who still might be skeptical with this whole article is just saying, here's what we plan on doing a little bit more specifically. And of course, the fans uh, will be able to ask a lot of those questions. I think we have been tasked to come up with a few ideas of questions ourselves. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Monday is going to be somewhat of an event. Yeah. I feel like I need to take off work. We we need to maybe go live afterwards and break down everything that's happened. I don't know. Uh, I, I would like that idea. I have already taken off of work, so uh, way ahead of you there. Um, There's no way I can do that. <laughs> don't ask me, Christian. <laughs> He'll call so you. any and- way that you can take off work. <laughs> You can pay me. You can pay me for the time missed, and then it'll be all good. Yeah. I think you just got a text. I did. We, we've both been texted by Ellis in the time that we started recording this, so I don't know I don't know if his ears were, what is it, ears burning? What is it when you yeah. are talked about? His ears were his ears were burning. I didn't. Is that right? Now you're making me question. I didn't mean to hurt him. Anyway, he texted us. He's asking us these questions, but I, I need some time to think about it. Because I know that they've already posted in the Schmoville group, and there's already like a hundred questions that have been asked. And so on top of that, I know that Ellis is going to do a good job. I think Ellis, I, we've had conversations with him. I think he also has an idea of what we're already thinking about. So, and I'm again, I'm not saying that I don't have questions, but uh, I just really need to think of some really, really good ones that some of these guys aren't going to ask because we do have a lot of people that are smart, smart in Schmoville, smart in Schmoville. And of course, Ellis is going to do a great job as well. But, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Monday, I think Monday's going to be, I think Monday's going to be fun. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it in the way, like I said, it was, it, it felt magical this week. It felt like an entourage episode. And I, I think the town hall is going to represent that as well. I think we're going to hear things in this town hall, uh, that weren't necessarily in the article that will continue to keep us excited. So, so yeah, I need to come up with some good questions. Yeah, we do. Maybe we can talk about it off air. Maybe we can coordinate that so we don't ask the same yeah. question. Exactly. Exactly. And I, yeah, I don't know. I guess we're supposed to text them back. I, we're not. I don't think people are calling into the show or anything. And Christian's not going to let me call in no matter what. So, already asked. Yeah, you're too much of a you're too much of a loose cannon. Never yeah. know what you're going to say. Okay, so. Continuing on with uh, the magical week that was in Collider Video, let's talk about just the sudden drop of the <laughs> rebranded Collider Movie Talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. For some reason, I thought we were going to talk about Harloff and Ellis because that was also somewhat of a sudden drop. I, in fact, I had written off I had written off watching Harloff and Ellis this week. We're not going to get it. And we got so last it. night, I was watching the... UK game and it was a late game and I realized that I had to. You even texted me. You even texted me. You were like, I guess we're not getting Harloff and Ellis. Yeah. Well, I I was watching the UK game and I realized I still had to watch Harloff and Ellis and I looked and it wasn't there and it was like, it was almost like 10 p.m. Eastern, and uh, it's it's usually out well before that. 
Um, and I happened to glance in Schmoville to see if anybody had asked when it was coming out. A copster even commented on the post, someone asking, and he said that it was coming out tonight. So I was like, what gives? Of course, you know, we know that it's there now and we watched it. But uh, for, for a while, I didn't think we were going to get it. And I was kind of disappointed because I thought uh, there would be plenty to talk about. But uh, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, movie talk. Movie talk was fun. I saw the the tweets. Uh, Dennis put out a tweet Tuesday night, uh, asking us to be sure to check in tomorrow. It's going to be a very exciting episode. I didn't know why, uh, and then I woke up to a brand new thumbnail. We like our thumbnails. We uh, we're very critical about our own thumbnails and about other people's. We don't usually talk about our critiques of thumbnails here on After Schmo, but just know that Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams, we. We go pretty fucking deep, all right? We even look at the thumbnails. We say, man, could, could you believe what blah, blah, blah's thumbnail was like? Oh, it looked like shit. Look like ass. Not this one, though. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't yeah. actually studied this thumbnail particularly. I was looking at the logo primarily. But tell me your thoughts on the thumbnail. Well, it's essentially the same thumbnail layout, but it is the new logo in the bottom left. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. New thumbnail. <laughs> New logo, new uh, sort of color combination here. Listen, uh, the, well, I spend the color, my- color combination is just throw any green in there possible. It kind of reminds me of my high school colors. We just yeah, but it was l- just any green we want. But listen, Ryan Stelling, let me uh, drop some graphic design knowledge on you here real quick. Color combinations that was just a mean joke. So much like they're they're I, I know it was a joke. It, it, it's very important to make sure you pick the right color combinations. Maybe they were studying this for months now. Maybe this is what led to the delay of the news coming out, picking the proper green. I have no idea. But listen, I spend most of my uh, life, my day-to-day life, working on graphics, working on art, uh, doing all this sort of stuff. That's my background. And you know, I'm pretty critical about stuff like this, the aesthetics, the visual aesthetics of things. And I was going through this thing with a fine-tooth comb. Let me just say that the the new stuff with movie talk the production elements the new graphics the new sidebars or bottom bars whatever you want to call it i think they not only do they look absolutely fantastic they without changing the background without changing how the set looks this show is already elevated in my opinion at least yeah. to another level it looks so much more professional it looks so much more just uh invigorating i think clean clean it's more inviting i think to watch it's not just camera switching and that's i'm not trying to throw shade on previous iterations it just makes what we've seen up until this point feel like an older version if that makes sense the way ellis started the show wednesday it was like a kick in the nuts you could feel you could just feel something different in the air and of course the graphics helped but i i again going back to that idea they understand that they are amidst fresh beginning, so I think they're excited and energetic as well. And that was one of the best panels of movie talk that I'd seen in a long time. Clark Wolf was a great contributor. Snep, I've had so much fun with Snep this week. He's been he's just been extra funny this week. But um, it was just a really great great show, and nothing was lost. Right, like it was slightly different at the beginning, but ultimately not a the the stuff that you love about collider the chemistry and the hot takes and all that stuff was still there but it was just a much prettier cleaner more professional collider movie talk and that was really great i thought back to something that christian said to me uh, a couple months ago he just flat out said look i'm tired of looking like a youtube channel and when you compare what they've done now with movie talk with with that sidebar that they had, it's it's just completely different, and it, it it makes all the difference in the world that they've done that, and I think that fits in line with that quote from Harloff. It's kind of funny, even with the sidebar. It's funny going back and watching older episodes of Collider Movie Talk because you're able to see the difference in the cameras and the lighting and this and that, and this is just another one of those great um, progressions and evolutions of the show. But it was also big enough to where you could really feel it. Like, absolutely feel it. Yeah, I don't think you realize how much value is added to what you're watching on a day-to-day basis than when they're talking about a particular movie or a particular trailer, and they can cut to the trailer. Uh, when Or when they can mm-hmm. do a, a side-by-side with somebody giving their take about a specific 
moment in a trailer or about a specific and yeah you know they they've cut to stills of things before in the past but there's just so there's just so much more richness to uh to adding that stuff like that and i need to sort of throw something out here real quick because you and i we produce content and whatnot we we know how much work goes into producing content i need to give a huge shout out to the people behind the scenes, uh, Cody Hall and whoever else is running, um, running stuff behind the scenes, because so much more uh, responsibility, so much more pressure is now added to those individuals. And yeah, you know, there's going to be some growing pains. They're still figuring things out. I'm curious to know how much of of like a trial run was done here, if there was any sort of run through, mm-hmm. because when you add these production elements to a live broadcast, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of it's a lot of practicing that needs to go into all of that stuff. So I just want to, you know, give a a round of. I mean, I'm not going to clap, but a, a round of applause, a pat on the back to <laughs> uh, to Cody Hall, and and I'm sure Cobster had to do with some of that stuff. I mean, Adam, absolutely. Maybe. I mean, there have to be to a certain extent, without there actually being this physical thing, a script on how all this stuff is going to be executed. It's so technical, and they executed it so well. And I'm so proud and I'm so happy. And I think even more so I'm annoyed with all you assholes out there that weren't patient enough to see some of this stuff. And I'm sure there's still going to be people that are like, well, it wasn't that big of a deal. How about you go to sleep, okay? How about you chill out? How about you relax? These are people who are working their asses off. And half of those people feel better already. Like they were, they were the downers. They were, they were talking the doom yeah, and gloom. But and now, and even, now they even feel those better. People that feel better. I'm just like, get out of here. I, know. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. You sound Sorry. like my aunt. <laughs> Does she have that voice? Ryan, how you doing? Well, I just hear it a lot. I walk into the house. Get out of here. Sorry. Put your pants on. Put your pants on? You ever podcasted with your pants off before? Well, yeah. I've also reviewed movies without my pants and, and YouTube videos while I've had a booger sticking out of my nose. Um, Have you ever farted while on After Schmo? Probably. Okay. Anyway, I was getting stressed out watching it, just knowing that Cody was back there, a bead of sweat rolling down his forehead. <laughs> and then I thought... Could JTE do this? <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want, here's what I want, guys. We've got this, we got this uh, new stuff going on. We've got this, all this new content we could get. Can I please have a uh, camera feed and access to like one camera on Cody Hall the entire time? Yeah. I just imagine him just like frantically <laughs> switching things and turning knobs, praying to God that he's turning the, the right, uh, the right little knob on on the board there. It's fast. Roka comes over. Roka comes over. He's got a water bottle that has this like three foot straw that reaches up to his face without distracting him from the monitor. Cody takes a sip, and then Roka runs back and grabs a <laughs> towel. And They're spraying water on him. That's that's how Roka produces the show. <laughs> like he's like a corner man in a boxing ring or something. Yeah, like he's that. the cut. He's the cut man in the. That's in fantastic. The- yeah. This is just a, sort of a side note because I want to actually ask you about um, Heroes as well. Did you get a chance to watch Heroes this week? I watched both Heroes, yeah. Okay. I want to ask you about that in a second. Before I move on to that, I think it now is a good t- to talk about all the this extra work they're putting into it, how much work they're putting into making sure that we're noticing some of these changes. It's, it's also a very important time to point out the fact that, listen, Collider, this channel that we love, the eh. people that we love watching from week to week, they have now... Uh, broken ties from from complex which is which is exciting in the sense that they can kind of do what they want it is a very punk rock move it is a very sort of rebellious thing i'm not saying they were rebelling rebelling against some corporate entity and all this and that but now more than ever i'm not saying that you can't uh you can't criticize you can't you know, want things to be different from what you're seeing. Of course not. But now more than ever is a great time to support what's going on in Collider and let them know that you appreciate the things that are going on. This is a very bold and brave thing that all of these people are doing. Uh, The safety net of a big company and a big corporation has literally just been uh, taken away from them. And and it's exciting to sort of set sail without that. And 
but it is also dangerous. It is, there's a lot of risk that goes with it. So I think now more than ever is a great time for us as a, as a fan community and whatnot to get behind these people and, and support them and appreciate them and hope for the best in this uh, scary sort of endeavor that they're going out on. You're absolutely right. I also think it's a great time and a great opportunity to examine the fact that these guys, like you said, it's punk rock. These guys moving forward are going to do whatever they want to do. They're going to do exactly whatever they set their sights on. They're just going to do it because they are capable. I don't know how, if Complex ever interfe- excuse me, ever interfered with anything that they wanted to do but couldn't, but now more than ever, come to set your expectations, come to an understanding that support is important, but they are going to I, I trust that Mark Fernandez and the team over there, they're sort of going to pave the way. I think they're thinking, again, a lot of big picture stuff that we can't fully grasp yet. And let, let's be for real here. Who, who wouldn't trust the producer of Grand Theft Auto Vice City? I mean, anybody who can come up with that, the storyline and the dialogue of Tommy Versetti, get, get out of here. We're in good hands. Yeah. So did you have... Any expectation? I'm not saying that this was required, but because movie talk was different, different, I was ready to see something different in Collider Heroes and <laughs> Collider Jedi Council. I didn't really get anything. Well, they get, they got the toys out of the way in Jedi Council. I did notice that. Yeah, they're still there. They still got some stuff on the desk, which is fine. Not not the same way. Oh God, no, hell no. I could actually see yeah. Perry. So I I guess I expected. I was ready to see. A few things here and there that might be different about those two shows. It wasn't a requirement by any means. They didn't say that anything was going to happen. But did you go into any of those thinking that you might see something a little bit different? You know what? I was curious about it. One of the reasons that I asked you about Heroes is because I actually didn't get a chance to watch Heroes. I'm very busy at my day job. Everybody on that listens to the show from week to week knows that I watch Collider during my day job, um, which is part of the reason why uh, I'm so behind right now that I can't take place or take part in this uh, town hall after show. Anyways, uh, I didn't get a chance to watch Heroes, and I was curious to see if there were, if you saw some of these changes. It w- it makes sense, I think, now that I'm thinking about it, that it, you kind of got to get your, your baby out the door, or I'm sorry, you got to get your oldest kid out the door first. You got to get your flagship show sort of transitioned over to these new graphics, to these, uh, these new production things going on the technical aspects of everything. So it makes sense that that would be the case. Um, I I did notice that, and I don't know if they're looking to do this. I think it would be interesting to see Jedi Council sort of update their graphics and this and that, something that we've talked about in the past. Um, But yeah, I I, I hope to see that in the future. I would like to see that in the future. Do Do I need it? No, I don't necessarily need it. But I think now that we've seen what movie talk is capable of, with an infusion of these new ideas and new visual aesthetics, I th- I think it's only uh, it would only make sense for us to anticipate the the rest of the content that we know and love to get that sort of injection uh, of performance enhancing drugs as well. I I think it kind of speaks to I think it kind of says everything about Collider the fact that those two series didn't really change because then you're not obstructing what Snep or Christian want to do with those shows. Like, Snep is going to still be able to do the show how he wants to do it. So I think that's actually pretty cool. I mean, that's not to say that they don't have changes in mind later on, but uh, I, I think that I think we got a little bit of that this week. Uh, I haven't watched the entire episode of Jedi Council, but I did get enough to know that it was um, Jedi Council as we know and love it right now. But, Business uh, I thought as that usual. Was, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't want to say like same as usual because I felt like that was a negative connotation. That's not what no, I was No, I don't think so. And I mean, I think I, I am curious. You sort of posed an interesting question. Uh, maybe maybe it's not a question, an interesting statement. I, I am curious to know how much sort of leverage each individual who hosts these shows sort of has on all of that stuff, on the visual aesthetic and, and the look and the vibe and how things go. Uh, I, I am curious to know as well if, if that is the case, if they are sort of the deciding factors on things, if they look at something like movie talk and they say, well, what can we do? What, you know, maybe they don't want to change anything. I think that's perfectly fine. Like, again, it doesn't have to change. I would like to see energy put into not just making the shows better, but also developing new shows. But I am curious if Christian is thinking to himself, what, what can we do to sort of make 
Jedi Council better to elevate it to a new level. And I guess my question to you for these specific shows, obviously with heroes, uh, things are, there's always things going on. And I'm not saying that's not the case with Jedi Council, but there are times where you have peak viewership where you really don't want to be experimenting with things. Right. And, I, and that, I'm not saying anything against uh, Rebels, but obviously while we're sort of on the ramp up to Han Solo, would you rather that happen now or would you rather that happen during peak Solo interest or coming down off of the sort of uh, ramp of Solo? They might as well... If you're specifically asking me about Jedi Council, they might as well wait till after the movie. Yeah. Um, because right now, I mean, Jedi Council is huge for Collider. Uh, we've talked about that quite a bit, how it sort of has its own separate community. It, it feels like that's one of the... It feels like that's a show, and maybe Heroes is like this too, but I think like a great portion of Collider subscribers are only there because of Jedi Council or their Star Wars content. So I, I don't see... Then again, they could change something, and I might like the change. And, but and it depends on how big of a change it actually is, right? Should they just completely do a total redux of Jedi Council right before Han Solo? Probably not. I mean, after that movie, they have an enti- after that movie and Rebels will be over. They have an entire year and a half of well, let's call it a year before Episode Nine stuff ramps up. They have a whole year of stag stagnant a stagnant time where they could do of something unknown. Kind of stuff. Yeah. So they might as well wait. And they, they've, they proved that they, they can be patient with this kind of stuff. I think they can give it a couple more months at least. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of on, on board with you. Um, I think that would be the smartest move. The one thing that we're not really touching on is the live show. I, uh, again, no one's told us to shut up about it. No one's, well, I think a post was deleted on Schmovel. But other than that, do you think we can anticipate the live show feeling different if slash when it comes back? Um, one thing that I found curious, and let's be real. I know for a fact, I have my inside source. I know for a fact that the Schmo's No Live Show is coming back. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm telling you that. It's an exclusive if you didn't know, I'm reporting it right now. <laughs> it was exclusive three weeks ago. And it's still an exclusive I think now. it's curious that there was no mention of the channel or brand of Schmo's No in that article at any point. And what I mean by that is it looks like all eyes are on Collider video right now. So... With that knowledge, I know that the live show is coming back, but this is this weird magical time where all eyes are on Collider. I just think that's it. those are two very interesting yeah. developments. I, I'm sort of picking up what you're putting down. I One of the things that I've noticed lately with Schmo's content, and when I say Schmo's content, I, I mean Harloff and Ellis, I mean... Uh, their movie reviews is that more than ever collider and schmoes feel more linked together than they've ever been. Because I remember back uh, when I first started really getting into schmo stuff, they were doing those movie reviews from their office with the guardians of the galaxy poster behind them. And it just, it didn't, it, it felt separate from collider, but now they're at these desks and obviously at the old studio, they had their own set so it's just interesting now that everything feels so cohesive. Um, obviously, there's so many schmoes, uh, sh- you know, schmoville personalities that are involved with Collider as well. So that goes without saying. I just think it's interesting, and I also have to say too well, that uh, uh, real quick, my last thing is with with this whole change, with this big risk of Collider setting sail being this punk rock thing, they sort of are looking for content. Right, they're looking for things to support them, help support them, and help grow their channel. Why, why not be in business even more so with the schmoes? The the way that the schmoes know YouTube channel is designed right now, in my opinion, it is not formatted with the intention of growing their audience, and that's not a shot 
at the quality of their content. I enjoy Harloff and Ellis. It's a different animal than the live show, and I understand that, and uh, I, I still am able to enjoy it because I listen to other things that are similar to it. It's just not a crazy abstract idea of a show. It's something that I've talked about on here pretty much since I posted this show. That I would it's like meant to, to it's meant to feed an existing audience. Is, would yes. you agree with that? Yes. There's, in my opinion, that show does not does not cause a channel to grow even further it's a supplementary thing maybe if they were adding other content over here or maybe doing something different with their movie reviews then i could see it but right now as it sits that channel seems to be coasting and i just think it's something that they're doing for fun because that's what brought them here in the first place and i actually like that idea because you know there's a point where to my understanding these guys were running two YouTube channels and it was probably really stressful <laughs> to worry about that. Um, so I like the idea of like the Schmoes No channel just being the whatever channel that can just be Mark and Christians and they just do whatever they want. So maybe it was but, always like that and it's my fault for thinking it was something different for a while, but that's just how I see it. And right now I think it's just the fun channel that they can coast on. Well, and but that's okay. That's yeah, okay absolutely. For for that to be the case, yes. and I think w- one other thing though that to sort of throw out there is that the live show and what the live show can be, it can be many things, right? The live show is a live show as we know it, but it has the ability to be a variety show. Mm-hmm. It has the ability to be a talk show and an interview show. It has the ability to be just a a fucking party with people that love movies. Uh, that does provide something different than what Collider does for the most part. I mean, for the for the most part, Collider is relatively buttoned up, right? It's uh, there are there are times when they have a lot of fun. They do the Makuga VR things, and uh, they'll do a ladies' night every now and then. But a Schmoes no live. Sometimes sh- Perry will crack a joke. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, Perry is a very funny person. I think. Yes, she, she, she makes me smile. Um, <laughs> She's just a professional. That's right. The uh, the Schmoes No Live show, though, provides basically... It, it provides versatility, I think, to the channel. To something... You know, maybe, maybe for people who are sort of, quote-unquote, numb or desensitized to the type of content that Collider puts out on a regular basis. I think something like the Schmoes No Live show provides just a different flavor that you wouldn't get in the same way that your beloved Dan Lebitard provides a different flavor than the other shows that you might get on something. Another example of an ESPN radio show that transitioned into an ESPN show. That's almost uh, specifically what I was referring to when I was having that discussion. So, How irritated do you think Roka is with me over my comments the past couple of weeks? Because I noticed uh, while I was on hiatus last week, I still caught Jedi Council and Christian was hosting. and He made it a point. I think Ken played along too. He made it a point <laughs> to go to Roka off camera and just continue congratulating him and thanking him for all of his hard work producing the show. Do you think that there's any... Do you think that was a response to what I did here two weeks ago? <laughs> oh, Roka doesn't listen to the show. There's no way, uh, no way in hell that's the case, which is fine. I, I get it. Um, I think that might be someone else feeding him that information sure. if that's the case, or the, or people, people who uh, people whose names have come out of your mouth have uh, were playing. It would actually be pretty funny if they were playing on a joke that they knew about that Roka was confused <laughs> about. Like he was like, "Wow, they're being super nice to me <laughs> right now." <laughs> that would that would actually be fantastic. Um yeah. no, I, I obviously that's a lot of that is you know a, a joke. It's a sort of a bit, but I mean, yeah, I think I'm excited to know more about what goes on behind the scenes with Collider and I don't necessarily mean like the behind the scenes stuff that they were doing or the bloopers and this and that. I'm excited to know more about and especially now, now that they are sort of doing things rogue. I'm excited to know what they do on a day-to-day basis, how the inner workings are. I think that type of content, it it has a place on Collider. Do you think so? Like some some things like that, maybe some like a day in the life or a vlog sort of thing? Well, Jay, I'm glad you brought it up because when I was in a band, I filmed all of our studio 
updates, the, the studio tours. I've, I know how the editing and the pacing of that kind of docuseries would work. Uh, I have the equipment. I've got the camera and the lenses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I do. That is something that I've been talking about uh, on here as well, something that I would like to champion. and I, At least give us a tour of the studio. I'm still kind of... We saw glimpses of it in the pictures of the, the gang and Tommy Wiseau. Uh, I'd be curious to... Even if it was just a quick uh, Harloff carpool... Episode. Yeah, I've, we we had a Karloff carpool in like two weeks, but um, <laughs> which is interesting. You know what's funny? We're we're talking about this right now, and that's something that's something that I do want to see more of too. Is that I want to see more of. I, I want to see Collider occupying more spaces besides YouTube. I want to see them do things. Obviously, we've talked about podcast stuff until we're blue in the face, but there's no reason why they can't utilize. Uh, a Facebook Live more. There's no reason why they can't utilize Instagram. They utilize Twitter pretty well in, into the stuff that they do. Or even, uh, what's it called? Uh, Vero, the new social media that people are still trying to figure out. Um, there's no reason why they can't utilize those things. And a behind the scenes thing, a vlog thing would live perfectly on on those outlets. Um, and, you know, Josh McCuga not working there anymore, not helming social media. Um, hopefully they find somebody that can figure out a way. If that, if that were my job or if that were your job, I think we would look at those platforms, especially like running social media as an opportunity to dev- to still develop content because they are content development platforms, regardless of what people use them for on a day-to-day basis. So Jay, I'm glad you brought it up. I pretty much have uh, every social media account imaginable and uh, I use them all and I watch you still have snapchat too i watch gary v religiously and i think i understand the value of <laughs> could that please be from now on anytime we apply to uh to any job we just put gary v S- subscriber <laughs> to gary vaynerchuk content yes and then if they're like well i i don't know what that means then you just say your loss and, and then you walk out the door and, and little do we know fernandez and vaynerchuk are best friends they're both arguing about who's going to buy the new york jets next year and they're going on and on and they don't trust each the, other and this is arguably well probably not arguably this is our biggest platform uh that we podcast on i just need to throw out a distress call ryan and i we basically live by the gary vaynerchuk uh way of life so if you value that we're we're here for you, okay? You know what we're talking about. We get it. I am going to add that to my resume, so don't be surprised if you hear it uh, again at the end of the show when I do the library. Anything else? What are we going to talk about? Harloff and Elves? Before we get to Harloff and <laughs> yeah, Elves? Let's, let's go ahead and tack that on at the end. Actually, before, I get, before we move on there, um, SK Plus, let's talk about SK Plus. Yeah. Just for a second. I mean, we just got to put a nail in the coffin of of uh beardo i thought for sure maybe he'd come back around and we'd see an episode pop up but that just hasn't happened i had so may it, may it rest in peace i had an epiphany because i'm a contributor to the wangers patreon i realized that a lot of my money was going towards beardo <laughs> it was also going towards cody which and and Kosh. cody is a big lebitard fan that's true I can just text him a libertardism right now and he would respond with the reply and that's all of our that's all the conversation would be and it's amazing and I'm glad I have that relationship with him. But with Beardo, however, I don't know, I might have to rethink yeah. this whole Patreon. I haven't had a JT movie thinks in a while, too, which is yeah. good for us. Did that ever count? <laughs> it is good for I don't us. Know. Uh, yeah, but no, no Harloff carpool in like a couple weeks, which I understand. I talked about it a little bit last week uh, while you were gone that it feels like they're sort of trying to, you know, it seems like they're closing deals and the stuff behind the scenes. I said last week that because we didn't get a Harloff and Ellis, because we weren't getting carpools and this and that, of course they were on movie talk and this and that, but it just seemed like more than ever, I felt I felt detached from Mark and Christian because it seems like on Harloff and Ellis on the live show on carpool, it seems like that's when we're breaking down that wall and and we're actually getting a one-on-one with these people. But when they're on movie talk and these other shows, these more produced shows, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. It just feels like there's more of a wall up. There's more of a divide and I'm not getting 
the hangout session with Mark and Christian. Do, can you sort of understand where I'm coming from with that? Um, I might need you to rephrase okay. it. I thought I, at first when you started talking, I thought you were doing one thing, and then as you moved on, it went to another, and now I'm a little confused. okay. When Mark and Christian are on Take Collider, two. when they're on Movie Talk and Jedi Council and this and that, it feels yeah. significantly different, less personal than when they're doing Harloff Carpool or when they're doing the live sure. show or when they're doing Harloff and Ellis. And last week, right. we didn't have any of those things. We didn't have right. any of that. And I felt for the first time, I noticed more of a detachment from them. It felt like I wasn't getting to hang out with my friends. Could you echo that sentiment or could you understand where I'm coming from? Uh, not too right on your parade, but no, because I was detached from all of it last right, week. Right, I understand. Yeah. So I, I didn't pick up on that vibe. I mean, obviously, I, I have wondered and thought about, you know, where Hall of Carpool is. He, Snep brought it up. I don't know if you caught that. Snep called him out. I think it was on Movie Talk. Like, Aren't you doing that car show? And Christian goes, we're taking a break. <laughs> I didn't so, pick up on that. That's hilarious. I don't know if it's a permanent break or not, but uh, they, they did bring it up. Uh, Snep called him out. Oh my, Snep was cracking. Anytime Snep, he is the worst ambassador for the movie trivia showdown, and I love it. He he doesn't even know what it's called. He was trying to because you know how they're promoting that live show, the live showdown at the top of all of the collider videos. And yes. Snep took a, a a stab at it on Heroes this week, and it was just hilarious because you could tell he didn't know what he was talking about, and it was like he was misreading a teleprompter. It was really great. But uh, all right, so to wrap up, it feels kind of funny <laughs> to just have an entirely different conversation talking about Harloff and Ellis. But uh, it's a show where they just talk about some stuff, so we can probably uh, breeze through this real quick and uh, head on out. So I I loved it from the get go because I think I don't know if you and I have talked about it. By the way, what is this Harloff and Ellis number five? Is that what it is? Sure, what I have it? no idea. I'm gonna Hold on, let me look. It's important because I was going to bring <laughs> bring up the title of it too, because when I got the notification, because again, I, like last night, I had no idea where the show was, so I was looking out for it on my phone. I got the notification: the Harloff and Ellis show number six dash Ryan S, and then it cuts off. And because I'm self involved, I immediately thought that oh, uh, uh, humbling myself, silly me, my name is in the title. Of the Harloff and Ellis show. Sure enough, it wasn't me. Of course. It was Ryan Seacrest. I thought that was a funny moment and a very humbling moment. People often mistake you for Ryan Seacrest. That's a that's a common thing. It was good to have the boys back. Same hairline. Kind of a all over the place episode. Just I mean in a good way. That's kind of what we come we've come to know and love. And not only do I pick up on uh on Ellis's frustration and annoyment with uh, Christian. Annoyment? Annoyment, sure. Uh, his anointment of Christian in the first, yeah. whatever, five to ten minutes of, of the episode. I actually find it really, really funny to see just how long it takes before Mark actually gets into the conversation of things. And I don't know what it is. I feel like Christian's always like super jazzed to get the show started. And Ellis just has no idea where he's going to take things. So so I get that. I really do get that. Wait, before we get into that, how did you feel about the r incredibly random uh, ad that played at the top of the show? I thought something was wrong. I thought I was watching an old episode. I did too. It was a little absurd because we, we share the same uh, YouTube channel or, or YouTube account uh, for those of you who don't know. So sometimes when I go ahead and start a Collider Smells Love video, it starts me where you are because you're watching it at the same time. So I started eight minutes in or whatever it was and then I had to rewind and rewind. That's such a weird word to say nowadays. Um, and there were different costumes. They were at the old space. It was just so confusing. Of course, because it, it starts off like a conversation. Uh, it's not a traditional ad where they're like, hey, heads up for all of you Dollar Shave Club fans. It's not that. They're just sitting there and slouching on the on the couch, and they were talking about Dollar Shave Club. So it was a little bizarre, a little funny, but uh, it's sort of in a weird way in the spirit of the entire show. So it was fun. Yeah, it is It is kind of funny too. And it's one of the most interesting things about the show is how, how sort of laid back 
it is and how laid back it's sort of put together. And I appreciate that. I think it's really, ex- it's exciting to watch from week to week because you never really know what you're going to get, but it is sort of funny that all of this is coupled with the new set, the new lighting, <laughs> the big TV behind them. It's just kind of like, do they, do they need to do all that stuff so much so that they got ran out of the studio? It's like, what are you guys doing in here? Oh, you guys are podcasting? All right, just keep going. You got another 10 minutes left to go. It's just kind of interesting how those things are coupled. Like, could they not just sit in, in their offices and, and do this? The echo might not be as bad. That's not me throwing shade, but leg- I'm legitimately saying, you know, you, you never know. I, I want to see what their offices look like. They could like. do it in the car. That's right. Combine combine carpool. Oh, I was going to bring this up. I had a genius idea. I didn't get to say it on here. Fernandez, listen to this. This this is an idea you can have for free. I'm filled with them. I'll give this one to you. Collider in cars getting coffee. It's a very obvious, apparent, self-aware show. But the, the episodes is based on whose car you're in. So there will be an episode with Christian. Maybe he's going to uh you know pick up ellis on the way to work i don't know if that would ever happen but uh just a little brief trip you can get into sort of his day on the job as well cut it all this together there's one episode it's christian harloff's episode of collider and cars getting coffee ultimately what i want to arrive at i think the perfect series finale for this idea i know that there was a time i don't know if this is still the case there was a time where schnepp and Dennis rode to work together. That's amazing. An amazing series finale right there. There you go. There's your free idea. You can just do a handful of them, and then you never have to do it again. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I actually think they should implement that as much as possible. They can uh, legitimately just rip off Christian's carpool and just do it for Collider. In fact, Christian, well, no, you, you, you could, would you would edit it. You would edit it and package that, it, put music to saying. it. It would be co- become more. That's what I'm saying. Christian has built a proof of concept. Now he can sell it to his own company <laughs> and just have a. Luckily, I have all the equipment here uh, that I can do this for them, and so it's all good. Yeah, I like the idea. Listen, I'm going to be hashtag transparent right now. I I literally have to leave and like. Like a few minutes, so I may have you just finish up talking about Harloff and Ellis. I don't want. I don't. Want, I'm saying this on air because I don't want people to. F- I didn't realize it was that that fast. You yeah, it wasn't mean. I didn't mean like oh, I got about thirty minutes. I mean, I have like five minutes. So here's what I want to talk about, and then you can wrap up the show on your own. You can uh, Ellis can text you about Colin Coward and and Bill Burr for the five minutes that you talk by yourself. I, I don't want so. Do that. Let's talk about this weed, okay? Let's talk about smoking weed. <laughs> First of all, let me... Actually, a couple things. One thing real quick. Ellis fucking gets it, okay? When he's, when when Christian was saying stuff like, yeah, they're really good about this and, and that, and they can... They, they, they talk about technical stuff, and he was like, oh, I guess the hub of Collider is in Kentucky. We have been saying that for a, a year and a half now, maybe longer, that... The Sight and Sound Studios is Collider East. We can make it a thing. We don't need to speculate about it. It's been, it's the case. Uh, Ellis gets it. Now, I mean, I mean, from answer- the Hollywood Reporter report, they stole our business model. Yes, one hundred percent. So, uh, yes, weed is illegal in Kentucky. That shouldn't come to a shock. And in fact, I don't. He, he forgot that our governor is Matt Bevin. I don't, and he sucks. I don't think. I don't think it's actually full on legal anywhere in in the South, especially in the Southeast. So I'll just get that right out of the way. It's not like people there are just will. Listen, Josh McCuga. One of the most fun things about him is the fact that he just will willy nilly sort of just talk about his partying excursions and drinking, getting drunk. That just doesn't happen that often in, in the collider space, which is why I'm so fascinated by it. But my God, did they get candid? It was hilarious to hear Christian be like, yeah, saw, saw annihilation stoned. Like, first of all, I don't know. Do we need to have a disclaimer? This is more of a joke than anything, but I'm sure there's some fans out there that were like, Oh, Oh my God. 
How dare they? How yeah. dare they review this art, this masterpiece, which was kind of a mediocre film. They just review this classic masterpiece high out their mind. There should be a disclaimer. We reviewed this high. No, that's not a big deal, but I think it is hilarious that people are having... I don't know if they're having that approach, but I'm well, sure people are having that approach. Christian did make it a point. Like It's not like he goes blaze out of his mind. He just takes a puff and then he goes. So, um, But for some people, that can send him over the edge. Am I right or am I right? I wouldn't know. No, for one, this is this goes back to, and we brought this up several times. It all goes back to, it, it's it's silly and fascinating what Christian decides to pick up from this show. Like he just takes some random off comment that we made about weed turned into Snelling and Jade are weird and do this whole thing on weed, and it's like, when did we ever do anything? I think, if anything, we've just said how how it just takes us aback a little bit, because more often than not, they aren't talking about it at all. So there is some shock value to them bringing it up, but it's not like we have this weird stigma about marijuana and weed in general and i mean like you said where we come from it's not legal so it's not just like out in the open everybody's talking about and doing this thing so i mean it does take us aback a little bit when it comes up in the content that we take in just because i mean i listen to disney radio for for most of my day so whenever they throw that stuff out i think it, t- it takes us aback a little bit and it was probably worth bringing it up on after Smo. but it's just one of those silly things and it makes me laugh the the things that christian takes from this show and sort of runs with in this really silly way <laughs> yeah i agree you can find me at jay williams j the of the y to the e on twitter and instagram it's the same for both ryan snelling it's been a pleasure to have you back last thing i'll say w- ellis if you eat weed, you are still participating in weed. I don't know why he thought to say like, ah, yeah, I don't smoke weed. Sometimes I'll eat some. You're still doing it, okay? You're still doing it. It's okay. You're pothead. Uh, we get it. I also like the uh, sort of hashtag transparency discussion they had about his personal life. Also very fascinating. Ryan, I'll see you later. You can close out the show. All right. I love you guys. Goodbye. Finally. Can't stand that guy. Well, it's just you and me now, (laughs) and Jay thinks I'm going to continue without him. Yeah, we have the entire episode of Harloff and Ellis to discuss, but, you know, I'm just not going to. I just can't. There can't be a discussion with just me here. I might just read my stream of consciousness notes, and then we will uh, dip out here, as we say in Kentucky. I don't know if you guys know what that means. This is your stream of consciousness notes brought to you by sightsoundpod.com. Here's what's wrong with you. Sir Putz a lot, LMAO. Christian asks Ellis questions like Beardo does. Is Chris Hardwick disposable, Ellis? I said that because I know Christian loves Chris Hardwick, as do I. He's the pioneer of this industry. I look up to him. I love recapping television. Walking Dead. You gotta wash your hands. Is it surprising to anyone that a stand-up comedian doesn't have energy? The fact that he even works out blows my mind. Billy Bush is a douche. Town Hall for Collider. How am I gonna see it if I don't live in Southern California? Collider Wrestling? Collider's Hope is truly in Kentucky. And those are your stream of consciousness notes. I took about 10 out because I'm just ready to go. I don't want to do this by myself, but I love you guys. I, I hope that all of you are at ease. I know that this has been a time for transition. Jay and I have been covering it the best way we know how. And, and I hope I hope my tone doesn't come across in a particular way. I, I get it. I get being passionate. I get having this attachment. This is YouTube. So I will defend that if you're going to get attached to any particular personality, YouTube is the place to do it because it's a much more intimate relationship than it is when you turn on AMC and watch The Walking Dead. I mean, it's just, it's different. And it's, it's one of the great reasons why YouTube and podcasting, this new media is so great. Um, But at the same time, at the same time, I hope that you guys can relax and 
feel comfortable and feel better about just the unlimited potential. I mean, there's things in that article that surprised me. And I think this town hall is going to be filled with useful information. And I think it's going to continue to be exciting. So again, I just ask you, sit back, wait, be patient. They were patient. They were very patient when it comes to keeping all this close to the chest. I know it frustrated them. I know it has to be such a relief for for these guys to be able to communicate with us. And I hope I hope you feel that too. I hope you can honestly tell these people are glad now that they are able to share this information with you. So I just want you to think about that. I, I want you to get excited. This was, like I said, I wasn't kidding. This was a magical time to be a Collider video fan. And I'm excited about the transitioning. I'm excited for all the new things, all the new possibilities. And just all aboard. <laughs> that, that was my tweet. Come on, just hop on the ride. It's gonna be it's gonna be great, and I think we can all say in Collider we trust. I, I just I honestly feel that way, and yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at What Up Snell. Actually, Jay had a good idea. We might. Well, I don't know about him. It just it just depends on uh, if we can get together on Monday. But I really like the idea of maybe Jay and I going live in the Schmoville Facebook group and sort of talking about. The, the I don't know. Maybe we could put it on SK Plus or something. Uh, I might be able to work that out and uh, talk to Christian and Mark about it. Sort of like an after schmo uh, special, if you will. That, that's a good idea. I like that. Um, so, yeah, just be on the lookout. The best place to stay up to date with that is uh, the Schmoville Facebook group, of course, and then to follow me on Twitter at what up snow i will keep you updated uh thank you so much as always for checking out after schmo uh, i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you next week hopefully there's a lot more goodness to talk about peace out